contents of kit in the installation kit and hardware kit. 16 safe lock clips, two spanner wrenches, 16 safe lock clamp bolts, 3 8 inch ratcheting wrench, 1 quarter inch tubing threaded adapter, three 1 quarter inch T fittings, hose routing clamps, three leveling valves, one knife, 40 feet of 1 quarter inch translucent tubing, one combination tape measure, laser level. Removing the table safely from the crate and safely lifting the table off of the pallet. Use a forklift to lift the table approximately six inches to one foot off the floor. Step on a corner of the pallet to create a space between the bottom of the table and the pallet. Insert a four inch by four inch piece of wood into this space. Repeat this procedure for the other end of the table. Lower the pallet onto the floor. Back the forklift out from under the pallet. Position the forklift forks into the space created between the pallet and the bottom of the table. Make sure to center the forklift forks under the table. Roughly positioning the isolators. Position the first isolator where you would like to set up your optical table system. Use the tape measure provided in the installation kit to measure the distance between each isolator and position the isolator. Refer to the installation instruction sheet for the proper isolator spacing measurements your system requires. Spacing depends on the size of the table being installed. Roughly position all four isolators in the location you have selected. Use the tape measure to measure the distances between each isolator. Reposition the isolators as needed. Measure the diagonals between the isolators to ensure they are positioned correctly. Reposition the isolators as necessary. Once satisfied with the positioning, use a forklift or pallet jack to position the table over the four isolators. The bottom of the table contains bolt hole patterns for mounting the isolators to the table via the safe lock clips. See diagram. Position the table so the bolt hole patterns line up over each isolator. Slowly lower the table to within one half inch of the isolators. Slight adjustment of isolator positioning may be necessary in order to achieve proper alignment for the isolator and bolt hole pattern on the bottom of the table. Move the isolators if necessary. Once satisfied with alignment, lower the table onto the isolators and remove the forklift or pallet jack. Place the level on the tabletop. The level measures if the table is level in the XY plane. There are two bubble indicators on this device. One can be viewed from the side, while the other can be viewed from the top. Use the two spanner wrenches to level the table. One wrench is used to hold the nut, while the other is used to rotate the bolt. This will either raise or lower the table depending on the direction the nut is rotated. Adjust the isolators as needed to achieve a level surface. Once level, make sure all three isolators are in contact with the bottom of the table. Use the safe lock clips and bolts to attach the isolators to the table. Each isolator requires three clips to be installed. Tighten the bolts with the 3 8 inch ratcheting wrench provided in the installation kit. Install the three leveling valves to three of the isolators. Note that only three leveling valves are needed since three points define a plane. The valves are attached to the bracket via two hex head bolts and a square nut. Attach gray tubing to the barbed fitting on the metering needle valve. Connect the other end of this tubing to the one quarter inch elbow fitting located on the isolator body. Repeat this process for the closest adjacent isolator with a leveling valve. These two isolators are referred to as master isolators. The valves on these isolators will allow independent adjustment of air pressure in each of these isolators. The last two isolators will share a valve. This is referred to as a master-slave relationship. The leveling valve will be used to adjust the air pressure in both of these isolators. The air pressure will be the same in both of these isolators. Cut the last piece of one quarter inch gray tubing in half with the knife. Attach one piece of this tubing to the barbed fitting on the metering needle valve. Attach a one quarter inch T fitting to the other end of this tubing. Next, connect the second piece of gray tubing to one of the remaining ports in the T connector. 
Connect the free end of the gray tubing to the one quarter inch elbow adapter located on the isolator body. There should be one free port remaining on the T fitting. Cut approximately a four foot length of one quarter inch translucent tubing. Connect one end of this tubing to the remaining port in the T connector. Connect the other end of the translucent tubing to the one quarter inch elbow adapter on the adjacent isolator. The legs are now plumbed. Cut three pieces of one quarter inch translucent tubing about three feet in length. Connect a piece of this tubing to the air supply fitting on each valve. Use a T fitting to connect the two master isolators together. Cut a five to 10 foot length of one quarter inch translucent tubing. Connect one end of this tubing to the open port of the T fitting installed in the previous step. Connect a T fitting to the other end of this piece of tubing. Connect a free port from the T fitting to the final valve. With the remainder of the one quarter inch translucent tubing, connect the final port on the T fitting to the air supply. Note that the air supply must have a regulator on it in order to control pressure. New port's part number for the recommended regulator is ARF. Set the air supply pressure to about 30 PSI and let the isolators inflate. This may take up to five minutes. You should be able to see the table rise when enough air is in the isolators. Rotate the height adjustment valve to raise and lower the isolator. Gently push down on the tabletop. The table should lower and then return to its starting position. Gently push up from the bottom of the table. The table should slightly rise, then return to its original position. If the table does not move freely either up or down, adjust the height adjustment screw in the leveling valve until the table moves freely. Repeat this process for all three isolators. If the table rocks back and forth without settling down, close all of the needle valve adjustment screws. Then, reopen the screw by one eighth to one quarter turn. Final test. Slightly push down on the tabletop. It should move down easily. Slightly lift up on the tabletop. It should move up easily. Push sideways on the side of the table. It should easily move from side to side. Congratulations, you have successfully installed your new vibration isolation system.